Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today, I just wanted to give you a heads up as the video is starting that I am gonna be doing some voiceovers here um, so that we can better understand small mouth positioning during the summer because before I left for this trip, I posted a little poll on my community tab for y'all to give me some input as to what kind of video you wanted me to make when I was out there at the Susquehanna in Pennsylvania. So today we're gonna look at some catches that I had during the practice period before the tournament because I was fishing a stretch that was completely new to me. I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to figure out the positioning of the smallmouth. And frankly, I was just trying to find a pattern that I could repeat elsewhere in the river. Now let's go ahead and dive into this clip and talk about what we should be doing in the morning when we're out there trying to figure something out. Clearly we want to hit all sides of everything so that we can get an idea of where the fish are positioning relative to structure. Now luckily within the first two casts I had a strike that told me something so let's look at that. If we take a closer look at this specific rock we see that we have current flowing down on the left side of it, we have current flowing down on the right side of it and that is creating a little slack pool directly behind it but further towards the right and that's exactly where this fish was sitting. He was set up ready to eat so that's where I've put the feeding icon. Now here I was throwing a finesse jig to try to get a follow-up bite since it was a topwater strike that missed. There's a good chance that the fish is still around and it's always a good idea to have something handy that you can toss in there real quick after the fact to try to pick that fish up even though he didn't get it the first time. I tried that here, it just wasn't working out. Well similar to yesterday, uh, seems like the fish are starting off on the downstream side of cover and they're pretty tight looks of that last bite. I mean, it's only one bite, but let's see if we can find another one holding up close to these rocks. That was a big fish. It's the downside of a buzz bait, single hook. You're gonna get fish if they don't get their mouth over the bait. You're not hooking them like you might with a block. Now, I know I'm repeating myself here, but even though we already have a little clue as to where some of the fish might be, we still want to continue checking different locations because throughout the day, there's a very good chance that their positioning is gonna change. Now, as we can see here, I was still finding fish that were set up on the downstream side of either an island or a rock in shallow slack water. Now I'm not going to dive too far into this catch because I looked over to my left, I saw some bait busting, I threw over there, smallmouth waked out and crushed it. Sometimes it's that simple, the smallmouth are going to be wherever you see bait and we don't need to think too much more about it. to get a 15 16 in the boat and we're gonna go for a couple more that first one man it was bigger than this i saw it come out of the water but they want the buzz bait Oh, yeah, 
It's a big smile. Look at that huge. 17, 18, I think. And actually, oh, maybe 18, 19, actually. Try to use my little net here. Needed a big bite. Yeah, you're ready to go, aren't you? All right, so let's go ahead and dive into this catch and see what it can tell us. From this initial view, it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot going on, but there are two things to point out, namely that we have two rocks that are running parallel to each other, and in the middle of those two rock formations, we have a pinch point, and this pinch point is going to be where the smallmouth set up to ambush their prey, and you can see that's exactly what this fish did. So if we look here, we have current flowing around the outside of the far rock, the outside of the closer rock, but also that current pushing right down through the middle and that's what's key here because if we look at this type of rock formation um, it's actually running parallel to the current there's ample opportunity for the smallmouth to hide up under it in an ambush location um, but the most important fact is that current is funneling down between those two rocks there's a narrowing of the river if you will and within this narrowing that's where we can see this fish come up and attack big fish big fish one thing I always try to do when fishing a big river like the Susquehanna, which you know at times could be half a mile wide to a mile wide, is make the big river small. And what I mean by that is I'm looking for structure within the river that creates smaller areas that I can fish more effectively that are also high percentage areas. So if we look quickly to my right here, we can see that we have two parallel rocks with current pushing down right through the middle, and that's creating a pinch point. This one is a little more obvious than the last catch. While this fish isn't the biggest, it still highlights the importance of finding these smaller pinch point areas within the context of a larger river. In this example, the Susquehanna can feel overwhelming because there are literally thousands of rock formations and if you're not taking a close look, they might all seem the same from a distance. But when you really dive in and start comparing one spot to another spot, you're going to start to notice things that set them apart. And if you're catching fish in an area that has something while another area does not, you need to start applying that pattern as you go down the river looking for more. A thick buzzbait eater. I don't know if that one was on camera, but he's right over here. Behind this little cut through. All right, for this next portion of the video, I'm gonna show you some water and I want you to be thinking about where you'd be casting and where you'd be looking for fish. Most of this is a foot or less in terms of depth and we do see that it flows up against some grass straight ahead. Now here I'm highlighting three locations that I think are the most likely to hold smallmouth bass. Spoiler alert, I did catch a good fish in one of these three locations, but I want you to choose which you think is the most likely. Now, to be perfectly honest, if I hadn't caught that fish on the first cast, I still would have casted to the other two locations because honestly, I still see them as high percentage areas for smallmouth. But because it is the middle of the summer, we do need to keep in mind that smallmouth tend to like to push towards the current during this time of the year. Giant. In this instance, however, Giant. I don't think current was the determining factor for this fish's location. Instead, it was the grass that it was around. So if we drop our assumptions about exactly where the fish are supposed Giant. to be and take in all the factors of a given oh, spot, smack. I think we're much more likely to catch fish. Something's going on with my GoPro, it keeps turning off on its own. 
still on the buzz bait around some of this shallow grass this is the first grass that actually has some water that's going up to it and got a nice 18 and a quarter absolutely crushed it as soon as it hit the water basically and it's the biggest one of the trip so far look at what that fish did to my buzz bait wire <laughs> Taking a closer look at the spot, I think there are three characteristics that stand out more than anything. The first is that we have a current inflow that is flowing into submerged grass, and behind that grass we have a shallow slack eddy that backs up against more grass. Now with it being the middle of a summer day, I would have put that fish a lot closer to the current inflow, but it actually came from the slack eddy that was in just a few inches of water. So if you chose option B, well done, you were correct. And frankly, I think this is important because as anglers, we cannot underestimate a smallmouth's ability to get up shallow, be unseen, and be in a spot that isn't necessarily considered a summer location. And if we rule these spots out before ever even fishing them, then we're gonna miss a lot of quality fish. Now with that last catch in mind, it should be obvious that you can't be afraid to get shallow yourself and sometimes that means getting out of the kayak, doing a little bit of wading, pulling the kayak through shallow areas stealthily, whatever it takes. Now while I take some time to cool off and smash a dink, let's talk about the takeaway so far. Firstly, we always want to check every possible position for smallmouth in order to establish a pattern that we can try to follow for the rest of the day. And that might mean ignoring the conventional wisdom for that season. The second important takeaway is making these big rivers small. Break it down to fish small areas that are easy to digest and don't get too overwhelmed thinking everything's the exact same, because it's not. As we've seen, smaller pinch points tend to be better and produce better fish. And lastly, do not be afraid to get shallow. Throw that buzz bait up in three inches of water. See what happens. All right guys, so let's talk about that last catch real quick. That fish came out of that tiny little slack spot. And I guarantee if I go over there, it's six, eight inches, 10 inches deep max. And so one thing with super clear water like this is you really can't be afraid to be tossing up into the shallow stuff, even though that you look at some of it and you're like, oh, man, I don't think fish are there. Um, I think it's important to remember that smallmouth will tuck up in dirt shallow water. And this is a perfect example of that. Um, another thing I want to point out about this catch is the fact that that's a pretty small eddy, especially the top half. So the bottom half has a little bit of flow and you can see that flow pushing down into a second bigger eddy. But that fish was sitting up here in this top half closer. And so it's actually a fairly small area. And in my experience, and I've said this before, the smaller the area, the bigger the fish. The smaller the eddy, the bigger the fish. They have enough space to push out in any competition, um, and it's enough space for them to hunt, but it's just not too big. And so if you go into a huge eddy and there's you know, 20 fish in it, 10 fish in it, even five, I guarantee that your average size is gonna be smaller. I'm not saying you can't catch big ones in big eddies. You certainly can, but I think you're much more likely to find a big smallmouth, especially in low clear water, in a smaller eddy in skinny water. As y'all can see here, this area has a lot of current pushing down through it, but if you look over at that left side, you can see that it's mostly protected. Now because it's summertime, 
conventional wisdom says fish the current seam next to the heaviest current. That's where the fish are going to be hanging out. Although in this case, that was not what was happening. Instead, I was fishing the slack water that still had a little bit of reduced current flowing down alongside it. This spot that I cast through here fits in with some of the patterns we've established today. We've got slack water, we've got a small little pinch point, and even though this catch is going to be somewhat out of view, the fish was chilling right near that pinch point waiting to ambush something that came down through there. Right there. There she is. 